everyone, I'm Nikki Hart and welcome to a new episode of Design Like a Pro. I have a new tutorial for you today and we are going to tackle how to print booklets in InDesign. This is something that can be extremely tricky because there are several ways that you can look at this and it even varies between a Mac and a PC. So I'm going to address those and the best techniques to print your booklets in InDesign. And one thing to keep in mind is there are two ways to create booklets. And so I'm going to show you the feature of InDesign that makes booklets so much easier. And we're going to contrast that to the more old fashioned way of creating booklets. And so using the features of InDesign to your advantage is going to save you a lot of time. And keep in mind that a booklet can be anything. As long as there is some sort of binding and it's folded in half, that is a booklet with multiple pages. And so as you're designing your magazines, if you're designing little brochures or handouts or something that has multiple pages and it's stapled or bound in a certain way, this tutorial is for you and we're going to show you the fastest, easiest way to tackle printing your booklets in InDesign. I'm using the latest version of InDesign. You are welcome to use any version that you have available. I will try to keep it so that it doesn't really matter what version you're using. So let's fire up InDesign and get started. So we have a booklet here. This booklet is a four by six. And so it's a small little chapter booklet that I use when I work with authors to promote their books. And you've seen Jessica's work before in many of my tutorials. She's always so wonderful to let me use these as examples to help you guys learn a little bit more about design. And so we have a booklet for her and it's a chapter booklet. Most of it's just text on the internal pages. And what it actually is, is a smaller version of her book that came out this week. And this is just the first chapter. So it's a great little promotional item here and it's perfect for this lesson. In addition to that, regardless of the size of your booklet, regardless of the page count of your booklet, how you save it out really isn't going to matter. So don't feel bad if what you have is not exactly like this. As long as you have multiple pages and you intend to print those out and fold it over to create a booklet, you're basically going to have exactly what you need for this lesson. So now that the booklet is complete, we're ready to save it out. Now in the past, what you would do is you would go to file export, you would save out your PDF and you would end up with a PDF that's stacked in the order that you see it in InDesign. So you start with page one and you end with the back cover. And that's fine. Many printers can actually take that and do what's needed to print that booklet. But InDesign comes with a neat little feature called print booklet that will actually reorder your pages in such a way that when you print this out, it's going to be in the right order so that it's double sided and you fold it in half to create your booklet. This is a great way to test this out if you have access to a copy machine, for example, that would print your pages double sided. Basically, when you print those out and they come out in order, you basically just pick up that stack, fold it in half and you have your booklet. If you have bleeds, however, there's a little bit of extra tension that needs to happen, but ideally you could just print that right out and it prints it in the order. And you would not get that if you were just printing from page one down to the last page. This is where print booklet comes into play. And if you go to this, you'll see a few settings. The first thing that pops up is a custom preset and it's going to print to a postscript file. And I have a preset in here that I'm gonna walk you through. This is my four by six booklet and I call it my default because I use this all the time. So I created a preset. And this does allow me on a PC to print to PDF. And this is what I want and I want all of my pages. You also have options here of how this is going to be bound so that you're formatting this correctly. Most of the time my projects for booklets are saddle stitched, but occasionally you may deal with a perfect binding, which is similar to hardcover or soft cover books where you have a rectangle glue that's happening. So all the pages are essentially glued into the outer cover and you create like a nice spine out of it, where saddle stitched means that you have staples that are holding your booklet together. So in this case, we are using staples to hold it together. We're not setting anything here. We're leaving our margins to automatically adjust, and we are going to print blank printer spreads. Now, what happens is you have the option to go into your printer settings here. And this is where it's very similar to where you export out your PDF. So you have options to select your printer and this is based on what you have available. You can see my printer here, which is my inkjet, postscript file, which is going to be your default. But if again, if you're on a PC, you're going to have the option to 
go straight to PDF. And then everything else is a matter of having your settings match the preset that you always use for saving out print projects. And I use the same flow every single time and it works all the time. And it makes it so much easier for my print documents. But you'll see one other thing that you want to check here is print blank pages. This is really important for booklets that have a blank page holding a space or you have the inside covers of your book not have any content on them. So if I go ahead and cancel out, you'll see that I have a blank page here and we want that to print. If we uncheck that, it's going to throw the flow of our booklet off. So if I uncheck that and we go to preview, I have a very weird problem here. I have a blank page. But as soon as I click print blank pages, it corrects itself. You know that you're on the right track when you see the front and back of your book side by side. That's a good little test. But you're also going to want to go through and make sure that this lines up. So we can see now that our blank page is in there and that's what we want. So number two and number 17 are actually printing on the same page on the reverse side of page one and 18. This gets a little bit confusing if you're not used to pagination with booklets. This is actually the way that designers used to design books before InDesign allowed you to have facing pages and you can then use this print booklet feature. So in InDesign, you used to design this with 18 here and one here, two, 17, and so on. So these are not consecutive, but when they print out and you fold them in half, you are in order with this. So this is actually going to be on the right. This is going to fold behind it on the right. So the best way to do this is to take out a sheet of paper, as many as you need, and just number them, your pages starting on the right, one all the way through the end. And you'll see that your pages end up being just like this without content. And that's what I used to have to do before before I use facing pages that I'd have to like lay out this little mock-up to make sure that I was designing the pages on the right spread. And what this is, is it's combining your four by six pages into one sheet of paper essentially, because your printer is going to print this off and then crop it to your crop marks, fold it in half, staple it, and you're ready to go. So you're saving the printer the step of having to do that with individual pages by doing it with InDesign's feature here. And the preview is what's really gonna help you out. If you have anything that's screwed up, for example, if you don't have enough pages to fill your spread, where you have this go down and you have a double-sided page here, a double-sided page here, a double-sided page here, a double-sided page here, and a double-sided page here. If I were to say, get rid of these last two pages, and we only have 16 pages, if I go to print booklet now and go to preview, we have blank pages and it's automatically filling in those blank, blank pages wherever it fits to make your booklet. You have a complete booklet, but you have a problem with all of your pages because now you have a blank page. So your front cover and your back cover are not lining up on the same page and that is a problem. So if you see that you don't have enough pages in your booklet to, to complete the booklet. The best way, and I've talked about this before, is that you wanna have an even number of pages and an odd number of spreads. That's a good test for you to make sure that you at least have enough pages to make up your booklet so that you don't have any blank page issue aside from the one that you definitely want to have. So now when you're ready to print your booklet, we go back and we set our preset here and we make sure that all of our pages look the way that they should. We go back to print settings and as I said, you can come through here and set this up just like you would any other PDF. So we're gonna use a custom size paper here because this is going to add what we need in width and it's gonna maintain the height. It's the width that gets larger because it's going to double our four by six. So the six and a half here is accommodating any bleeds that we have set as is the width, but you'll notice that it's not four, it's eight. And that's because it's doubling it. It's putting two pages on one sheet of paper for us to print off. 
Everything else we want to keep the same here. If your printer likes having crop marks, you can go ahead and include that. You definitely want to check use document bleed settings because we have bleeds set up for our covers. We're going to have composite CMYK for where I'm at. So we're going to print all of this. Also, we can check text as black if we want to, but I don't have all of my text as black. So I'm going to uncheck that so it doesn't have any weird effects on any part that I have colored text. Everything else is pretty much default that comes with InDesign. And then my last step is to utilize my PDF preset that I have talked about before where I use my high-res outlines. This is going to take all of that text and it's going to condense it and outline it is what it's going to do. And that works really well for older printers who won't have your font. So that's what I have. When you're done here, you can go ahead and save this preset so you can use it again if you want to. That's the best way to have something that you're going to be using over and over again. You hit OK here and then you hit print. And then I have some, if you have any URL missing links, it's going to alert you to that or any sort of issue. So I'm just going to hit OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to create that PDF. You're gonna get a dialog box here to open this up to save this. Now it's time to save this where you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and it's going to create that PDF. Notice that your dialog box looks a little bit different than when you're exporting your PDF. And that's because you're actually using the print function here. So it is creating that PDF slightly different than when you are going to export it. When you're done, it's important to open this up. And when you're printing to PDF, it's going to uh, it's going to open up automatically. And this is what it looks like. So instead of seeing your pages one right after the other, you're actually seeing them side by side as spreads. And this means that they're going to print double sided. So this is our covers. This is going to be on the inside of that cover and so forth and so on. So these are going to be double sided, double sided all the way down until the end of our booklet. And then when you print them, and fold them, it's going to be in order one page after the other the way you would read a book. And that's the key difference between printing your booklet and exporting out your pages individually is that you can print these out and have them go in the order that you need to. Now one thing, what happens again if you're on a Mac and you don't have that option to save as a PDF? If I go back to my printer settings and switch this to postscript file and keep everything else the same, we're going to have the general settings here, but the postscript file and the distiller is actually going to house our settings and hit OK and hit print. Instead of a PDF, I'm going to get rid of this extension. Instead of a PDF, we're going to create a postscript file. And it's going to go through the same process as our PDF. The only difference is that it's not actually creating a PDF. Okay, and so once that happens, you can see that we now have a PostScript file. And this is not the same as a PDF. We actually need to create that PDF. And that's going to require the use of Distiller. And you can open this, right click here, and go to Acrobat Distiller. And it will open up our Distiller for us. And if you right click and do that, it's automatically going to bring in that PDF and that PostScript file and create the PDF for us. Okay, and so we have this here and you can see that I have access to the same PDF presets that I do in InDesign. So I'm just checking my four by six booklet so that I have that. And then it's going to create that booklet for us. If I go back to our file here and open up our PDF, you can see that we have that PDF as well. And again, what you can do is you can drag and drop your PostScript files too. So if you opened up Distiller instead of right clicking, you can drag your PostScript file in here and it's going to create that PDF for you. All right, and it's done. So if I double click this, it's gonna open up my PDF so I can make sure everything looks exactly the same. So that's basically how you would create booklets in InDesign. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you struggled at all, please leave me a comment below and I will do my best to answer those for you. And go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, please. That will keep you up to date with all the latest and greatest here at Design Like a Pro. I thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.